Students get a better understanding of something if they know the history of it, they know where, they know where it's come from. That's my, my view. So when I go to class, when I go to the interface design class for instance, I can take them down to the museum and show them what an early interface was. You know, we, we talk about interface design and they think of their, their handheld computer, their laptop, their desktop and they look at the screen and they think that's you know, that's an interface, and sure it is, but where did, you know, how did we get there? What was the early interface with computers? I'm going to take them down to the Franti series and they say, well, what's the interface here with a computer? So it's, it's um, giving them the idea of what an interface is by, by taking them back to something that's, that looks very primitive. And, and then we look at the evolution of interfaces over time. We look at the different um, applications. You know, we go back and look at Physicalc and WordStar and things like that and sort of progress through the, the different versions of these different products and you actually have like running Physicalc? No, no, we don't. Okay. No, no, I've sourced, I've sourced it from the <laughs> sourced it from the web. But I, I think it just broadens their outlook on IT and I think it's a danger with computing students that they become very can become very focused on the latest and and quickly discard the technology they're using when the next one comes along and forget about it. And Even before we had the museum, we were lucky. We had here CIRAC. I've mentioned CIRAC to you. Yeah. Um, the world's number four digital stored program computer. It's left over, used till about 65, so uh, about 72 or so. It arrived on campus just for storage purposes. But we put it in a display area. Uh, when I first arrived from my, with my teaching here in about 88, I arrived to teach, um, I would always take my introduction to computer architecture students past it. It had so much to tell students about the origin of operating systems, the primary function of operating systems to uh, allocate resources and the, the efficiency of use of resources. With the programming students I can show them things like punch cards and things like this, you know, how did we get information into the computers and show them things like that. Uh, so it might be part of one class in a semester that um, I use the, mu the museum in particular for, for my classes and others use it too in similar ways. But we do have school children coming on visits and then we have about an hour or two and we take them um, through the museum, starting with the, the calculating machines and we talk about what do people do before computers and I've got things like this. You know, what is a computer? Where do we get the name of computing from? And I've got this picture of women using slide rules in 1948 I think it was, in uh, this is in America, doing their calculations and the idea that the first computers were, were people, okay, and, and often they were women so that's kind of an interesting bit of social history there. So trying to connect the computers and state of the technology to what was happening in society at the time. The physical artifacts are very important to that. That idea of the physical, we still carry forward even today as we're looking to see what we can do with the full museum that we've created now. Um, we've toyed with ideas of a web-based series of exhibitions, uh, photographing all of the artifacts and making sure that people can sort of browse through and move through halls. We feel that even with that web-based teaching methods, we would still like to have physical artefacts. We've toyed with um, a box of artefacts that we would send out to schools that are working on our program, that do an educational program. So the physical hands-on is a very important thing. Museum curators understand it. People who aren't museum curators tend not to. Uh, we had a, a staff member in our in our school, and when we started the museum, I was talking to her and, and said, oh, we will have slide rules in there. Now, she had done an honours degree in maths, and she had not heard, she, not, not that she hadn't seen a slide rule, she didn't even know what one was. And that, to me, was amazing, because 
when I went to uni, everyone carried a slide book. You know, we all had this is my slide book from my university days. We all had these as science students, engineering students. Uh, we all had these tools. And she was probably 10 years younger than me and suddenly had no idea what I was even talking about, hadn't heard the word. So I think that really um, made me realise that history is just so quickly forgotten and um, it, there's a danger that um, we just, um, yeah, we, we forget about these things and if we um, don't have them around for people to see, they forget about the history of, uh, you know, the, the, the technology that they're using. And I think that's a real danger. <laughs>